Regarded as one of television's most enduring icons, Ed Sullivan's incredible path, from simple origins to spectacular rise as a trailblazing TV personality is one to admire. Join us as we look at Sullivan's contributions to the world of entertainment. From his iconic show, The Ed Sullivan Show, to his unshakable commitment to diversity and inclusion. You will also discover how Sullivan defied expectations and broke down barriers, showcasing a diverse range of talent on his show and making an indelible influence on American society. Early Life Sullivan's life began at the turn of the 20th century, a moment of dramatic change and shifting landscapes in America, in the bustling, varied neighborhood of Harlem, New York City. Born on September 28, 1901, into the loving arms of Elizabeth Smith and Peter Arthur Sullivan, a committed customs house employee, Sullivan's birth brought both joy and grief. Joy, because the birth of a child, usually gives joy and happiness to a family. Sorrow, because Sullivan's twin brother, Daniel, was born with health concerns and only lived a few months. This early tragedy would cast a shadow over Sullivan's young life, but it would also be woven into the complicated tapestry that defined his character and tenacity. The Sullivans moved to Port Chester, New York, looking for greater space and a fresh start. Their new home, a small red brick house at 53 Washington Street, provided a loving environment for Sullivan's development. Music was as important as bread in this Irish-rooted household. The family would gather around the piano and sing songs that reflected their Irish heritage, and new tunes would be played on the phonograph. These moments of musical joy and familial bonding were vital in Sullivan's upbringing, instilling a strong love of culture and unity. Port Chester High School was the platform where Sullivan's athletic abilities were showcased. He was a natural athlete who excelled at sports, earning 12 athletic letters to demonstrate his skill, perseverance, and versatility. His athleticism and clever thinking were on full display on the football field as he played halfback. As a guard on the basketball court, he was always one step ahead with quick and decisive actions. On the track, he sprinted with such tenacity and drive that his competitors trailed behind. But it was in baseball that Sullivan's leadership abilities truly shined. As catcher and team captain, he was more than just a player. He was the driving force behind his club's many championships. His ability to inspire, motivate, and lead his teammates was clear in every game and triumph they shared. These high school years were more than just about sports. They reflected Sullivan's developing personality as a young man who valued teamwork, leadership, and the quest for perfection. Racially integrated athletics were a common part of Sullivan's high school experience. In New York, it was customary to play alongside and against black athletes in an atmosphere where one's talent on the field was the sole measure of one's value. This early exposure to diversity and inclusivity had a tremendous impact on Sullivan's perspective. He remembered with ease the integrated nature of his high school sports teams and the sharp contrast while playing against teams from more segregated locations. In the modest circumstances of high school sports, Sullivan's fundamental principles of equality and justice were developed. These views would form the basis of Sullivan's identity. His experiences taught him that every person, regardless of color, is entitled to respect and dignity. This awareness stemmed not from political activism or social movements, but from the simple, everyday encounters of a young athlete playing against teammates and opponents from many backgrounds. Sullivan carried a lesson in humanity with him, a deep belief in all people's equality that would govern his actions and decisions for the rest of his life. Sullivan's early years, from the familial relationships formed in the warmth of their music-filled house in Port Chester to the lessons gained on the sports fields were a tapestry of experiences that created his personality. These were years of learning, maturing, and comprehending the world in all of its complexity. Through the joys of music and the challenges and achievements of athletics, Sullivan gained a strong understanding of culture, teamwork, leadership, and most importantly, the intrinsic worth of every human. The story of Sullivan's youth is more than just a personal triumph. It is a reflection of the times he lived in and the progressive principles he represented. It demonstrates the power of athletics and education to promote diversity, inclusiveness, and equality. Sullivan's journey from Harlem streets to the sports grounds of Port Chester High School provides insight into the life of a young man who, by his actions and convictions, exemplified the finest of American ideals. It demonstrates the idea that true change begins with modest, everyday choices and the values we hold dear. The first job. 
Starting with the humble beginnings of the Port Chester Daily item, Sullivan's journey into journalism was more than just covering the sports he enjoyed. It was also about forging his own path. After high school, he chose to build on the familiar by working full-time at the local newspaper. This move was more than just practical. It served as a stepping stone, laying the groundwork for a career that would later see him brush shoulders with Broadway and other stars. 1919 was a year of transition for Sullivan. His shift to the Hartford Post was promising, but fate had other plans, and the paper folded within a week of his arrival. This defeat, however, did not discourage Sullivan. Instead, it catapulted him into a series of positions that broadened his experience and strengthened his resolve. His time as a sports reporter at the New York Evening Mail ended when the Daily shuttered in 1923, but Sullivan, ever resilient, continued to move through the journalism industry, gaining experience and expertise with each shift. His rise through the ranks of the Associated Press, the Philadelphia Bulletin, the Morning World, the Morning Telegraph, the New York Bulletin, and the Leader was more than just changing professions. It was also about honing his voice and understanding the pulse of the city and its residents. By the time Sullivan joined the New York Evening Graphic in 1927, he was more than just a sports writer. He was a seasoned journalist eager to make his mark. The retirement of Walter Winchell in 1929 created an opportunity for Sullivan that would alter the path of his career. Sullivan took over as Broadway columnist for the New York Evening Graphic, a position that would define him. But it wasn't enough to keep him there. Sullivan's passion and talent drove him to the New York Daily News, where his column, Little Old New York, became a must-read for anybody interested in Broadway and show business. Sullivan's influence was not limited to the printed page. His move to radio, where he delivered show business news, broadened his reach, allowing him to share his observations and anecdotes with a larger audience. His part in the 1933 film Mr. Broadway was more than a job. It was a declaration of Sullivan's intimate connection to New York's entertainment industry, taking spectators through the nightclubs to meet the celebrities of the period. The competition between Sullivan and Winchell, defined by their respective haunts of the El Morocco nightclub and the Stork Club, was more than just a personal war. It was a collision of titans, with each defining New York's cultural environment in their own unique way. Sullivan's legacy, built on his unwavering work ethic and talent for storytelling, would outlast Winchell's, demonstrating his continuing appeal and influence. Sullivan's journey into showbiz extended beyond his editorials and his programs. He was a showman, producing vaudeville acts, directing radio shows, and arranging charity shows to highlight his diverse talent and devotion to giving back to the community. These undertakings were more than just side ventures. They were central to Sullivan's personality, combining his journalistic integrity with his passion for entertainment. The Summer Silver Theater premiered on CBS in 1941, with Sullivan at the helm and Will Bradley as the band leader, adding another feather to his crown. The variety program, which included a guest celebrity each week, demonstrated Sullivan's ability to entertain and engage audiences, confirming his place as a revered figure in American entertainment. Sullivan's rise from sports reporter in a tiny town to acclaimed writer and entertainment tycoon in New York is a tale of perseverance, flexibility, and enthusiasm. Through the highs and lows, Sullivan stayed dedicated to his art, eager to take on the next challenge. His career, which has included journalism, radio, and entertainment, illustrates the growth of American media and the ever-changing environment of New York's cultural scene. Work in television. In the late 1940s, television was still in its infancy, a burgeoning medium poised to be changed by a man whose singular presence and vision would leave an indelible stamp on American culture. This man was Ed Sullivan, whose television career began in 1948, when producer Marlo Lewis persuaded CBS to hire him as the host of a weekly Sunday night variety show. Originally titled Toast of the Town, this show would later become famously known as The Ed Sullivan Show. Its premiere in June 1948 signaled the beginning of a new era in American family entertainment. The show acquired its foothold and following while broadcasting from Maxine Elliott's theater on West 39th Street in New York, then transferring to CBS TV Studio 50 at Broadway in January 1953, a facility that would be renamed the Ed Sullivan Theater 
In 1967, despite a rough start with critics who were harsh on Sullivan, criticizing his talent and on-screen personality, The Ed Sullivan Show became a staple of American television. Critics originally couldn't understand Sullivan's appeal. Harriet Van Horn's sharp criticism that Sullivan rose not because of his personality, but because he lacked one elicited a curt and legendary response from Sullivan himself. This exchange exemplified Sullivan's no-nonsense personality, which surprisingly endeared him to the American public. Critics continued to question Sullivan's odd demeanor and perceived lack of traditional hosting abilities, comparing him unfavorably to inanimate objects and criticizing his sloppy movement and difficult speech patterns. Despite these criticisms, Sullivan's show thrived, owing in large part to its ability to tap into something larger than Sullivan's on-screen character. He had an extraordinary capacity to select acts that spoke directly to the hearts of the American audience, transforming The Ed Sullivan Show into a melting pot of entertainment that drew families from all over the country. Comedian Fred Allen correctly recognized that Sullivan's success in the industry would be guaranteed as long as there were talented people to display. Alan King, a regular on the show, said that while Sullivan may have appeared to do nothing, he did it better than anyone else on television. This was Ed Sullivan's paradox, a host who did not wow with his own talent while wonderfully showcasing that of others. A typical episode of The Ed Sullivan Show could include a whirlwind of entertainment. Vaudeville acts such as acrobats and magicians captivating the audience with their feats, comedians delivering punchlines that resonated with viewers, singing stars and theater figures bringing art to the living room, and one-of-a-kind acts such as the beloved puppet Topo Gigio, or famous athletes sharing their stories. The event was a worldwide platform, with performers from Europe and beyond showcasing their talents to an American audience extending the viewers' cultural perspectives. Sullivan's strategy for success was simple, yet groundbreaking. He saw television's ability to bring people together, introduce them to the diversity of human ingenuity and talent, and establish a shared space for amusement. The Ed Sullivan Show was more than just a variety show. It was a weekly celebration of talent that exemplified Sullivan's vision for television. Families were introduced to music, comedy, and theatrical icons, many of whom received their first big national exposure because of Sullivan. The Ed Sullivan Show wasn't simply about introducing renowned artists to the American public or redefining Sunday nights. It was about how Sullivan, with his modest attitude and a good eye for talent, built a truly inclusive platform that celebrated the diversity of entertainment and culture. This broadcast foreshadowed the modern variety show, defining norms and breaking down barriers, demonstrating that television had the capacity to unify people, entertain them, and introduce them to new and intriguing worlds. Through the lens of history, the criticisms leveled about Sullivan's on-camera presence and attitude appear insignificant in comparison to his impact on American entertainment and culture. Sullivan's The Ed Sullivan Show became more than just a television show. It was a cultural institution, a weekly meeting that nobody wanted to miss. It was here that generations laughed, amazed, and were moved together, making lifelong memories. In the end, Sullivan's true genius was his capacity to see beyond himself, elevate others, and, therefore, build something everlasting. This is the soul of The Ed Sullivan Show and why, decades later, we remember and love its host and legacy. Ed Sullivan was more than simply a television host. He also served as an inspiration to many comedians and actresses who enjoyed impersonating him. People like John Biner, Frank Gorshin, Rich Little, and especially Will Jordan enjoyed replicating Sullivan's peculiar mannerisms and words on his own show. Even celebrities like Johnny Carson and Joan Rivers got in on the act, imitating Sullivan's stiff posture posture, high shoulders, and distinct voice delivery. They would frequently imitate his catchphrases, such as, and now right here on our stage, or for all you youngsters out there. But maybe the most famous phrase they imitated was, a really big shoe, which is how Sullivan pronounces the word show. Surprisingly, Sullivan never used this same sentence to open his show. It was only his impersonators that made it popular. Will Jordan took his impersonation of Sullivan to the next level, playing the host in various films, including I Wanna Hold Your Hand, The Buddy Holly Story, 
The Doors, Mr. Saturday Night, Down With Love, and a 1979 television movie about Elvis. But Sullivan's influence did not end there. In 1954, he co-hosted a television musical spectacular marking General Foods' 25th anniversary, paying tribute to the famed musical pair Rodgers and Hammerstein. Sullivan inspired a song in the musical Bye Bye Birdie, and in 1963, he appeared in a film as himself. In the 1964 film The Patsy, Sullivan made a noteworthy appearance, parodying his own characteristics under Jerry Lewis's supervision. Sullivan's influence extended beyond beyond humor to other aspects of popular culture. Aside from his work as a television host, he became a cultural figure, with comedians and actors from many mediums imitating and celebrating his mannerisms and words. His influence lives on throughout the entertainment industry, reminding us of the lasting impact of a man who gave joy and humor to millions of people each week. Behind the scenes, his personal life. In his personal connections, Ed Sullivan experienced both joy and grief. Zibel Bauer, a star swimmer, died of cancer in 1927 at the age of 23, cruelly ending his engagement to her. This loss surely had a significant impact on Sullivan, influencing his perspective on life and love. In 1926, Sullivan met Sylvia Weinstein, initiating a romantic relationship that overcame hardships and obstacles. Sylvia first kept their connection a secret from her family stating she was dating a Jewish man called Edward Solomon. However, when her brother uncovered the truth, that she was in a relationship with Sullivan, a Catholic, it damaged family relations. Opposition to their interfaith connection resulted in a chaotic three-year period of discontinuity. Despite parental objections, Sullivan and Sylvia remained dedicated to each other. Their love won out, and on April 28, 1930, they exchanged vows in a small city hall ceremony. Their union was soon blessed with the birth of their daughter, Elizabeth, fondly known as Betty. Betty's birth brought excitement and hope to the Sullivan family, and it was particularly emotional because it coincided with the death of Sullivan's mother, after whom Betty was named. Betty's life will eventually collide with the legacy of The Ed Sullivan Show in an unexpected way. In 1952, she married Bob Precht, the producer of her father's famous television show. This connection brought a familial dimension to the show's backstage dynamics, strengthening the bond between Sullivan's personal and professional lives. The Sullivan family moved to the Hotel Del Monaco in 1944, having previously lived at the Hotel Astoron Times Square. Ed Sullivan, ever the workaholic, hired a nearby suite to use as his office. Here, he immersed himself in the complexities of show business, methodically planning and coordinating each episode of The Ed Sullivan Show. Despite his rigorous schedule, Sullivan made it a point to phone his wife after each presentation, soliciting her opinion and appreciating her support. Away from the studio, the Sullivans enjoyed New York City's dynamic social scene, visiting renowned clubs such as The Stork Club, Danny's Hideaway, and Jimmy Kelly's. These places served as a backdrop for their social meetings with acquaintances ranging from other celebrities to significant persons such as U.S. presidents. Sullivan's pleasant personality and extensive connections allowed him to enter exclusive circles and mix with society's elite. Sylvia Sullivan was a major figure in her husband's life, serving as both his partner and financial advisor. Her smart advice and persistent support helped Sullivan achieve success both personally and professionally. However, tragedy struck the Sullivan family once more when Sylvia died on March 16, 1973, at Mount Sinai Hospital. Her abrupt death from a ruptured aorta left a vacuum in Sullivan's life signaling the end of a partnership that had faced both challenges and achievements together. Reflecting on Ed Sullivan's personal life reveals that the renowned television personality was formed by love, grief, and tenacity, last years, and death. In 1965, CBS made a significant change by beginning to broadcast its weekly programs in color. This featured The Ed Sullivan Show, which aired live only in the Central and Eastern time zones. The presentation was taped for Pacific and Mountain time zones. Today, you may see excerpts from the show on home videos and the official Ed Sullivan Show YouTube channel. However, by 1971, the show's popularity had waned. 
and CBS chose to terminate it in March of that year. This decision was part of a larger effort to cancel several long-running shows during the 1970-1971 season, dubbed The Rural Purge. Ed Sullivan was upset over the cancellation and refused to host the remaining three months of scheduled performances. Instead, replays aired with a final show without him airing in June. Despite the termination of his show, Sullivan stayed with the network and hosted a special program commemorating its 25th anniversary in June 1973. In September 1974, Sullivan received dreadful news. He had advanced esophageal cancer. However, Sullivan was unaware of the diagnosis since his family chose to keep it from him. He thought his condition was just another complication of his long-term battle with gastric ulcers. Sadly, Ed Sullivan died on October 13, 1974, at Lenox Hill Hospital in New York. On a cold, rainy day, 2,000 people gathered at St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York for his funeral. He was laid to rest in a crypt in Ferncliff Cemetery in Hartsdale, New York, a legacy left behind. Ed Sullivan was a television entertainment pioneer best recognized for his commitment to diversity and talent on his legendary show, The Ed Sullivan Show. His commitment to arranging performances without regard for religion, color, or politics helped him develop a large and loyal audience. This liberal approach enabled him to exhibit a diverse range of talent, making his show a popular fixture in American homes. Elvis Presley's debut on The Ed Sullivan Show was one of the most memorable moments in the show's history. Despite early worries about Presley's provocative image, Sullivan saw his great appeal and signed him for three appearances in 1956. However, fate intervened when Sullivan and his son-in-law, show producer Robert Precht, were in a near-fatal vehicle accident only weeks before Presley's debut. This sad situation caused them to miss the moment, but Sullivan later praised Presley after seeing him personally, describing him as a real decent fine boy. Sullivan's sharp eye for talent did not end with Elvis. In 1963, he observed Beatlemania personally at Heathrow Airport and was immediately convinced of the Beatles' potential. Despite initial reservations about the band's lack of a commercially successful song in the United States, Sullivan eventually contracted them for an appearance on his show. On February 9, 1964, the Beatles made their television debut, becoming the most watched program in history. The band made three more in-person visits to the show and later submitted filmed performances. Another British success, the Dave Clark Five, became regulars on the show, making 13 appearances due to their cleaner image than the Beatles. Unlike many other shows at the time, Sullivan insisted on performing most musical acts live on his show rather than lip-syncing to their recordings. This devotion to authenticity distinguished The Ed Sullivan Show as a forum for fans to witness genuine, live talent. However, there were certain exceptions, such as when technical constraints prevented an artist from singing live. For example, during B.J. Thomas's 1969 performance of Raindrops Keep Fallin' on My Head, special effects such as water sprayed on him were used to enhance the performance. In 1969, Sullivan presented the Jackson 5 to the world with their debut single, I Want You Back. The song swiftly rose to the top of the Billboard Hot 100, cementing Sullivan's reputation for identifying and promoting new talent. Sullivan has always been committed to showcasing different performers and giving up-and-coming talents a chance to shine. Even as television entertainment progressed, Sullivan remained a popular character. In 1972, he produced a presentation called Clown Around, in which he appeared dressed as a clown, demonstrating his readiness to accept fresh and offbeat ideas. This versatility as a host and entertainer demonstrated Sullivan's long-lasting influence on the world of television. In 1971, as the show's ratings began to fall, CBS took the difficult choice to discontinue The Ed Sullivan Show as part of a larger effort to update its roster. Despite the cancellation, Sullivan continued to work for the network in various roles, including hosting a 25th anniversary special in June 1973. Sullivan's legacy lives on through the contributions he made to television entertainment. He has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame and was posthumously admitted to the Television Academy Hall of Fame in 1985. His pioneering attitude, dedication to talent, and ability to connect with people sealed his place among the most significant figures in television history. Ed Sullivan was more than simply a television personality. He pioneered the promotion of diversity and inclusion in entertainment. 
Throughout his career, he featured a diverse range of talent on his legendary show, The Ed Sullivan Show, breaking down racial barriers and championing performers regardless of background. Sullivan's dedication to diversity was clear in his admiration for black performers. At a time when racial segregation still existed, he made a point of featuring black performers such as Louis Armstrong, Pearl Bailey, and Sammy Davis Jr. He didn't stop there. Sullivan also exposed his audience to lesser-known black artists from Harlem, including Peg Leg Bates, Pigmeat Markham, and Tim Moore. By providing these performers with a national television platform, Sullivan managed to bridge the gap between black and white America, exposing his audience to a diverse range of talent that they might not have encountered otherwise. Despite pressure from sponsors and critics to exclude black performers, Sullivan maintained his commitment to equality. He refused to give in to prejudice and defied expectations by engaging with black entertainers on film. When chastised for kissing Pearl Bailey on the cheek, or shaking Nat King Cole's hand, Sullivan stayed firm, refusing to sacrifice his values to please others. His daring acts conveyed a powerful message. Talent recognizes no race or color, and everyone deserves a chance to shine. Sullivan's commitment to encouraging diversity went beyond racial borders. He also helped popularize country and Western music on television. At a time when the genre was frequently disregarded by mainstream media, Sullivan provided a platform for Nashville singers to demonstrate their abilities. His show featured performances by legendary country performers such as Johnny Cash, Glenn Campbell, and many more, setting the way for later country music shows such as Hee Haw and variety shows hosted by country singers. The Beatles' entrance to American audiences was one of the most pivotal moments in the Ed Sullivan Show history. Despite initial reservations about the band's economic success in the United States, Sullivan took a chance and scheduled them for an appearance on his show in 1964. The Beatles' electric performance grabbed viewers, making it the most watched program in television history at the time. Sullivan's decision to feature the Beatles not only propelled the band to superstardom, but also reinforced his reputation as a tastemaker with a good sense of talent. Sullivan's influence extended beyond his own show. He made guest appearances on numerous television shows, broadening his reach and impact. His openness to accept fresh and offbeat ideas was demonstrated by his appearances on the CBS sitcom Mr. Adams and Eve and as a mystery guest on What's My Line. In 1961, he even played the role of Red Skelton on The Red Skelton Show, demonstrating his flexibility as a performer. Ed Sullivan's reputation as a champion of diversity and inclusion lives on today. Sullivan's daring acts and unrelenting commitment to showcasing talent from all backgrounds left an enduring mark on television and beyond. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you again soon.